As I stand in front of you, I'll let you know, no one, no one ever will be licensed our technology. No one ever will have what we have. Why? Because this is to help people. This is not a commercial endeavor where it's a get-rich-quick scheme. Today, Vox Life is recognized as the biggest breakthrough in wellness in the last 50 years. It's accredited as being the biggest breakthrough in neurotech and neurostimulation maybe over the last century. It's thousands of associates over North America helping hundreds of thousands of people get better, feel better, and stay better. But it didn't always start this way. At the root of it, at the heart of it, Vox Life is a story of a boy trying to help his mother. And that boy is me. In 1983, my mother was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She went from diagnosis to wheelchair in under 18 months. Now, in 1983, not a lot was known about MS. It seemingly was a black box of neurological disorders and dysfunction. And as a curious 13-year-old, as the apple of my mother's eye, I was very curious to understand why this happened to my mom. How did this happen to me? How did a healthy, strong, vibrant woman who was taking care of a growing family, uh, working, really the cornerstone of our household, uh, in terms of that nurturing, loving person, all of a sudden became completely dependent on others for her care. And in 1983, I'll tell you, there wasn't a lot known. Today, her condition would be classified as progressively relapsing MS. But in 1983, it was just MS. What this did for me was to really raise that, that curiosity of understanding the big why of what happened. So that curiosity of understanding neurology started for me at a very young age simply because I loved my mom and I wanted to help her. But not being able to help her uh, does a lot of things to people. When you are in a situation of seeming hopelessness, of seemingly desperate situation of trying to find help, uh, you will go to seemingly no ends and no limits to find that help. And I think that's true for all of us. Those of us that have loved ones that we've cared for or that have been ill, there really isn't any and we won't go to to help them. And really it was that determination and that passion, that love for my mom that allowed me to continue in later years in my life to discover and to investigate and to develop and invest in, in finding ways to help people with conditions that perhaps didn't have solutions in traditional or generally accepted uh, healthcare and, and wellness. Now, now let's step forward a number of years, right? So 2008, I'm introduced to neuromuscular scientists that are looking at ways to help TMJ and TMD issues. And there was a, an invention of an oral orthotic that was, des, that was designed to help people with, with TMJ and TMD issues. A side effect of that product was improvements in vestibular response, balance, stability, range of motion, flexibility. Now, somebody that has studied neurology for so long in, in the hopes of helping my mother, this was fascinating to me. Here was a non-electrical, non-chemical way to, to elicit a neuro response. And all I could think of when I saw this was, was there a way to help my mother? Was there a way to help people with MS? And that was my first big step into understanding, you know, peripheral nervous stimulation, uh, away from electrical stimulation, away from chemical stimulation. So what did, we, what did we do with it? You know, we looked at all the different ways that the body responds to neurostimulation. And something that was key to our understanding was actually research done in 1964 by Dr. C.J. Griffin in Sydney, Australia. What Dr. C.J. Griffin had done was actually mapped out trigeminal disorders and the impact on reticular formation uh, in the brainstem. Now reticular formation is just gray matter inside the brainstem. Uh, that has all these different nuclei that help control and regulate our autonomic functions of our body, the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. Um, in layman's terms, the brainstem is critical for our overall health and wellness. It controls our heart rate, controls our breathing, controls our balance, our stability, our body's natural pain fighting mechanisms. It controls our posture. All the things that we don't want to think about are controlled by the brainstem and the nuclei in it. And what Dr. C.J. Griffin mapped out was that if there's a disorder in the trigeminal system, so the nerves in the face, or disorder in the peripheral system or information coming into the brainstem, there's going to be a disorder or disruption in the functionality of the brainstem. And he concluded that if there was harmony in the information coming in, and if the brainstem could reach homeostasis or reach a balance, you'd see a remarkable and immediate improvement in the functionality of the brainstem. Now this is remarkable. 
what this says is that the brainstem is so critical to overall health that we can really make drastic and, and meaningful impact on quality of life if we can reach brainstem homeostasis. And that really was, 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 was the beginning of, of Vox in terms of what it is today of understanding how do we get to that. Now there's a big gap between looking at you know, trigeminal disorders in the face and, and getting to the bottom of the feet of where Vox HPT is today. And it's a really interesting story and I'll share it with you. So when, we were, when I was researching trigeminal disorders, I came across a condition called trigeminal neuralgia. Now, some of you might know that trigeminal neuralgia is an inflammation of the cranial nerves in our face. So some of us might have eaten ice cream too fast or drank something that's really cold too fast and we get a brain freeze. Trigeminal neuralgia is seemingly a brain freeze 24 hours a day. It's a severely debilitating condition. Uh, nobody really knows what causes it. Treatment of it is very sporadic. But recognized ways of treating trigeminal neuralgia include drugs and then inject the face or, or right into, into the nerves. Electricity, zap the nerves to numb them. And in drastic cases when those things don't work, um, they'll recommend surgery to cut the nerve into the brain, so just to, just to alleviate the pain. These were nothing that we wanted to investigate or really look at because we weren't looking for those solutions. We weren't looking for surgery solutions. We weren't looking for chemical solutions. We weren't looking for electrical solutions. And the reason I wasn't looking for those is because I had investigated all of those solutions. In trying to help my mom, I had investigated the latest therapies for MS, the latest drugs for MS, the latest electrical treatments for MS, you name it. It had been investigated, it had been approached, it had been tried, and really we hadn't seen the results that, that, that we were hoping for. But something along the way of, of investigating trigeminal neuralgia, I came across anecdotal evidence from all over the world that manipulation of the bottom of the feet was at times very successful at soothing the, the pain and, and, and really reducing that inflammation. Now having studied Dr. C.J. Griffin's work and understanding that soothed nerves going into the brainstem would lead to a better operating brainstem, this was another milestone in our understanding. If there was something on the bottom of the feet that could help the brainstem function better, we needed to figure out what that was. And that's what led to a six year discovery journey of understanding what are the different inputs, the neuro inputs on the bottom of the feet, how do they connect to the brainstem, and what can the outcome be? So we started looking at it. And what we found was that there is an immense, over 45 to 50 years of, of research looking at the different types of receptors just underneath our skin, just under, underneath on the soles of our feet. But all of this research seemingly exists inside silos. So there's research done at the University of British Columbia that looked at mapping the different mechanoreceptors on the bottom of the feet. The conclusion done from this study was that these receptors play some role in postural stability and balance. Sadly, additional research wasn't done beyond that. There's just numerous studies done at Harvard that looked at brain activity associated with very specific acupuncture points. And the conclusion, and as clear as day as you look at those MRI images, is that very specific acupuncture points have very specific correlation to brain activity and neuronal network activity in the brain. Again, this information exists in a silo and doesn't reference or speak to mechanoreceptor activation. Then there's 3D mapping of dermatomes, which are spinal nerves all over our body. Again, massive research all over the world pointing to a correlation of receptors on our body, on the bottom of our feet, and the relationship to the brainstem. And my guess and my hope was that there would be an integrative relationship between all these different re receptors and the result that we wanted in the brainstem. We knew that it was possible to get the result in the brainstem because of the work that Dr. C.J. Griffin had done. And also because of that lighthouse effect of, you know, people manipulating or massaging the bottom of the feet to get a similar result. So that was key. And if we could mimic that or mirror that, we know that we'd have a great solution. So what did we do? We relied on the scientific method, experimentation, observation, conclusion. We had hypotheses that we could affect brainstem activity and help the brainstem get to homeostasis. And finally, at the conclusion of six years, we were able to deduce a very specific pattern of receptor activation on the bottom of the feet that signals the brainstem to help it reach homeostasis. Now think about this. We can touch very specific pattern and sequence of receptors, nerve endings on the bottom of the feet, individual receptor cells on the bottom of the feet, that collectively will help the brainstem get to homeostasis. 
What this means is the output is going to be better balance, better stability, better range of motion, better pain management, better respiratory efficiency, better HRV, heart rate variability. All of these things that are controlled by the brainstem are seemingly, miraculously, instantly are going to operate better. So once we had this technology figured out, then it was a matter of putting it into products that could be easily used to test efficacy. So we've built this pattern into insoles and knitted it into socks. And we needed to prove the efficacy to measure really what could it do. So we commissioned a number of uh, clinical studies, independent studies, to take a look at the efficacy. So one of the first studies that we commissioned was that we wanted to evaluate the impact our technology could have on painful neuropathy in people with diabetes. So we worked with diabetic leaders, and the intake requirements are real simple. Adult diabetes with at least level four pain on the universal pain scale. So double blind study, they got our technology with, with our socks and they got a placebo socks to make sure that we could effectively measure efficacy. And the results were absolutely amazing. Over 90% of the subjects reported that their pain had subsided. Over 76% of them reported that their pain had reduced the level two or less of the universal pain scale. Now let me clarify what this means. Level four pain is pain that interferes with daily tasks and really is a hindrance on quality of life. Level two pain is hardly noticeable and doesn't interfere with quality of life. This is a massive and immediate improvement without drugs, without chemicals, without surgery. Seemingly these people will only be able to rely on painkillers, opioids, and other, and other drugs to help them manage their pain. With our technology, they were able to do it by simply putting on a pair of socks. We think as a solution for people with diabetes and really the epidemic that has become diabetes, this is, is a real solution for people who just want an opportunity to enjoy mobility and quality of life. Other studies we've conducted looked at postural stability and balance. We worked with a major labor union and we worked with their workforce to see what impact our technology could have. And what we saw was a 31% improvement in postural stability and balance. Now 31% doesn't mean anything, does it? Unless we put it into context. In context, what that means is an 8x reduction in fall risk in people over the age of 55. That's astounding, considering there's a 65% mortality rate in seniors over two years that fall and break a hip. If we can offer a solution that can give them more security, more stability, more freedom to walk around, to enjoy their life and their golden years, and reduce that risk of fall and injury, I think, again, it's a massive movement forward in quality of life and wellness. And finally, we also looked at athletic performance and power performance. We worked with the California Sports Institute, and we looked at power output, range of motion, flexibility, and what we saw was a 22% increase on power output on the wind gate cycles. We had 17% improvement in velocity of force. We see a 15 degrees improvement in range of motion. These are massive, massive improvements in overall energy levels, out power output levels, and how much energy we're gonna have at the end of the day. So when we put all of these things together, when we put the pain management together, when we put the better postural stability and balance together, when we put that together with more mobility and more power and more balance, what we have is a completely enhanced quality of life. Really, it's the new you, it's the new person, because whatever their best was, now it's at a new level. They have less pain, they have more mobility, they have more range of motion, they have more energy. And when we map that against, and we compare that to get what's happening in the world, when 85% of people that go to the doctor complain of low energy and some kind of pain, they're there because they're uncomfortable. They're there because they're looking for help with their quality of life. And with our solutions and with our technology, we have something that's completely risk-free. It's safe. It's affordable. It doesn't rely on drugs. It doesn't rely on specialized treatment. And they can use it every day out of the comfort of their own home without any special training. That's the promise of Vox HPT. We have a commitment here at Vox Life. We want to help a billion people with their quality of life and wellness. And the reason it's a billion is any mission that we have has to be bigger than my own personal mission. My mission was to help my mom, and through that it's evolved into helping everyone's mom, helping society in general. But that mission would end if it was too small. Then it would only be a movement. What we're talking about is a wellness revolution. What we're talking about is each of us helping those people in our lives, our friends, our families, our parents, our children, our siblings, with their quality of life, 
and them sharing that with their friends and family. When we were starting to look at developing this technology, I spoke to a lot of thought leaders in neurology, neurostimulation, neuromodulation. And every single one of them said that our goal and our purpose and what we wanted to develop couldn't be done. They said that all the textbooks in neurology, all the readings that they'd done, all the research that had been done, clearly indicated that there wasn't a precise enough way to get that stimulation in the brain. That without electricity and without drugs, there was really no way to get the brain stem to work better. But this didn't make sense. So in the spite of all the expert evidence and all the expert testimony, we strove forward to finding that solution and finding that answer. And what resulted after six years was really, is really an earth shattering solution. So to put it in perspective, what Vox HP delivers, there isn't a single neuromodulation, neurostimulation device that's electricity based that delivers the benefits our technology delivers. There isn't a single chemical or drug that delivers the benefits our technology delivers. There isn't a single nutritional product in the world that delivers the benefits our technology delivers. And there isn't a single modality or therapy in the world that delivers the benefits that our technology delivers. The word disruptive gets thrown out a lot. And most people think that, oh, it's just something cool and new. To be truly disruptive, it has to be magical. It has to be seemingly improbable, impossible. And that's what's happened with Vox HPT. We have a drug-free, electrical-free, risk-free solution that helps manage pain, helps improve mobility and quality of life. That's the promise of Vox HPT.